All right, hi everybody. Welcome to my grandmother Nancy's art studio. My name is Jackie and this is my grandmother. Hi. <laughs> Her name is Nancy, um, and we are psyched to have you here. So first exciting thing is that we're both vaccinated and we can both be together, which has not happened in a really, really long time. So this is a real exciting, exciting thing. So, um, and the second thing is that we are here today just to talk to her a little bit about her artwork and um, how she got into what she does. She's selling a really cool new book that I actually have not seen until today called Ducks on Parade. And this is, she's gonna tell us all about it, but basically it's a book compilation of, of photographs taken on her ducks and the ducks are all in costume. Well, everything is switched because Facebook Live is weird. Anyway, so um, this is a great opportunity just to talk to her hear a little bit about her work. I'm going to show you her other book here um, and just ask questions. So as you guys ask questions, first of all, we're using StreamYard today, which is what allows us to go live on multiple platforms. So please make sure that you, I think you, it just, I don't remember what it says on there, but you have to say, okay, to StreamYard. What? So basically, if you want me to see who you are commenting, you have to accept StreamYard. I forget what the wording that they say is, but it's all, it's all good. Say yes. And that way we can talk to you. All right. So I call her nanny. So that's how I refer to her if I say that and it sounds funny, but Nanny, this is great. All right. So first question is that is Nanny. I'd love to know. I mean, I've heard this a million times, but I want to know how you got into art. People always say, how is your whole family? Like they find out who you are in relationship to me and they want to know is your, how is your whole family so artistic? So <laughs> I, you know, I, I always tell people it's not that we were, maybe we have some talent, but it really stems from the um, confidence that's built at a really young age. So I grew up in, you know, I grew up in, in her house, there are always markers and crayons and paper. Everywhere I've been my whole life, there are, are markers, crayons, you know, I've been encouraged to do art. So talk to us a little bit about your childhood and how you got into art. Well, my childhood was different. Very different. <laughs> yeah, let's hear. So, I mean, I, I never thought about that I was going to be an artist. Um, I did sort of, I sort of fell into it. And I guess um, I used to go to the library a lot. So uh, the um, librarians were really nice and they used to show me books and I used to ask about art books. And so I fell in love with Michelangelo. Somehow I loved those strong sculptures and paintings and everything that he did. And somehow at age 10, I guess it was. But the, I, I really have to say that from the time I was a little girl, I would love to play with clay. And I would play with it and I'd love it. And I didn't mind getting dirty and, you know, all that stuff. And then um, I think the most important thing that happened, you know, we never know if you're a teacher, you never know what, how you're going to affect one of your students. And so Miss Clark in age, I was whatever I was at uh, third grade, um, we just come back to the, from the summer camp and I did a painting. She said, do a painting, something that you like to do when you were at camp. So I was taking fencing lessons when I was at camp and I drew two campers with their blue shorts, which was the uniform, fencing. And she was so impressed with my painting that she put it on the wall. And, you know, she followed me. It was interesting. She was sort of encouraging me in a very slow, wonderful way. And I think that's really how it happened. The other thing that's, I don't know how it happened, but somehow my hands know what to do. Um, I seem to know how things work. I don't quite understand why, but I would take things apart in my house growing up if there was something going on with the washing machine because things were simple in those days. I could fix it or a clock or, I don't know. I always knew how to fix things. And I always knew how to build things to this day. I do a 240 <laughs> piece puzzle um, on the internet. The pieces are all laid out, so I don't have to do that. But I love to put things together. And um, I'm sort of good with tools and I love to use tools. And I used to watch all the carpenters and the people um, when they'd come to the house to see how they did things. So I always watched and I learned from- She's very popular, the phone's ringing. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> it's, it'll only be a couple of times. <laughs> um, okay. So I guess that sort of answers the question. Um, so I just kept doing it. Um, my lead piece when I graduated from the Boston Museum School was, um, was a lead piece in the student show. And 
it was a mother and child. And at that time, when I graduated, I was pregnant with my first child. So I've always been encouraged when I went to high school, my sculpture was the lead sculpture in a show. And I just sort of did it. <laughs> Do you think, okay, so what you said stood out to me just now, because you mentioned that you had a teacher in third grade. Yeah. And we at the paint bar most often get people saying that I had a teacher who told me I was a bad artist, therefore I stopped doing art. They come to the paint bar, we've had people start crying because they were so discouraged as young children and haven't done art since third grade. Uh, and so to hear you say that you had a teacher encourage you shows the um, power of teacher and how ad as adults we can really influence kids. Absolutely, but your parents can too. And my parents were, would let me take a I made the biggest mess with plaster and clay and all this in the cellar. And the cellar happened to be all fixed up. It wasn't a pretty cellar. It was a pretty cellar and they let me <laughs> make a terrible mess there. Yeah. And eventually I even taught little classes there. Right. So, they so your parents did me. encourage you. They absolutely Whether did. they knew it or not. Absolutely. And I only think it's since running the paint bar and doing, we've been doing so many corporate events. Pre-COVID, we did a lot of corporate events, yeah. really focusing on um, creativity. And so it's forced us to think about, um, you know, the power of what happens when you're younger and creativity and how it evolves and, you know, that whole progression. Yeah. Well, I think so. the most important thing a parent can do is to give their kids anything they want by way of materials. Don't say, oh, you know, don't use too much clay or don't want, use too much paper and let kids have the freedom to use all the material they want to express themselves. Yeah. There's no real answer to what art is. We don't know everybody is gonna always ask, what right. is art? What is good art? Look, all right, people are commenting what's very cool here. Oh. So you met Carlene back in the day at the paint bar. She says, I feel so honored to have met Nancy. She's so inspiring, look at you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, now let's see if I can go back. I, we're using this on my phone, and so now I have to figure out how to go back to, um, I don't wanna screw anything up, but okay. So here are a few. So we have a few people watching, lots of our paint bar members. Hello to everybody. Um, we're psyched to have you here. Great. Okay. Great. Well, that's great. So that's, that's all. every time I have these conversations with you, I learn a lot. And, um, you know, her childhood is, is just a few years Pretty ago. Pretty experience. <laughs> <laughs> and things are a lot different now. So, like, how do you see kids now versus, and then we'll get into your book, but when you watch kids doing art now, do you see it as any different as when you were growing up? I mean, they have technology. They have, oh. it's very different. Oh, it's very different. First of all, computers, I mean, uh, when I grew up, the, the milkman was being brought to my house with a horse and wagon, yeah. and the ice man cometh, and so um, everything. It was very different, but also the materials. That is very different. <laughs> so, but the materials, all we had were crayons, mm -hmm. and we had paint, and that, and those little paint boxes that you painted. So the materials were very limited. Um, we had plasticine, which is at that, it was very smelly in those days. I now have something that's still an oil-based clay, but doesn't smell. But I mean, there was no technology. There were no cell phones. There, there was no way to do anything the way right. you can now. I mean, you can go on the computer and you can be a great artist. Um, yeah. You can, you can have a camera and you're a great photographer. <laughs> Right. So things have really changed a lot and yeah. kids have an opportunity to express themselves in so many more ways than possibly yeah. we did. However, I had something that they have too, and you all have. You have the masters. And as a child and later on, I copied the masters and I learned from the masters. And they, the whole world of art is available to you by looking at and copying the masters, which is an old, old thing to do. But you know- The you masters have, as in Jackie shown at the paint bar. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> of the Renaissance. So. Exactly. But I mean, you know, you have these are, the, you have the teachers, can you imagine? You have teachers from all over the world and forever back as your teachers and you can use them. That doesn't mean you have to do classical things, but you can learn a lot about art by observing. And that's a, good that's, point. that's a universal thing. It's still true. It was true when I was a child. Yeah, that's true now. That's very, it's that is a good different. point. Yeah, um, very But we have access to it in a completely different way than, than what you did. Yeah. And your yeah. art probably even, so, okay, let's go, let's get into your art here. So a few more people. So Kimberly is saying that her six-year-old daughter loves to draw and paint. Any advice on how to have her explore it more? How do you, any advice on having your child explore art more? 
I would you think, say to a parent? Well, I think the best thing is we, I used to take my kids to the museum or to the, um, to the zoo and they'd take a piece of paper and a pencil and they would draw. Mm -hmm. And so they'd have fun when they went. So, you know, you, if you want to take a kid to the museum, they say, yeah, I don't want to go. <laughs> but if you take them and you say, well, look, why don't you draw what you're seeing or That's something like that. That's a great like idea. That. Or if you go to the zoo or someplace, you could take clay with you or sculpty or something so that they could um, be at a place and do something rather than just observe it. So that's think, a great tip I've never thought about. Oh yeah, I used really to take my kids all the time to different places with a pad, a pad paper mm -hmm. and they would draw it. And that's a genius come. idea. I've never heard of everybody. I'm hearing it for the, here for the first time. And when you guys see me documenting it with my kids, you'll know where I got it from. Uh, Lisa's on here. So happy to join. Lisa, we're so happy to have you here. So many awesome people on here. All right. So why don't you tell us a little bit about, so 1987 is when you made the Ducks. Oh, All right. So a lot happened between the beginning of her life and 1987, right? But um, let's talk about the Ducks because we don't, you know, we don't want to take up too much of your time. So well, I just want to say that um, I feel when we talk about the Ducks, I feel like I'm a fiddler with one string because there have been so many other things that I did. And I spent some 20 or 24 or five years doing what I would call gallery art and having galleries all over the United States where I showed my sculpture. So the Ducks well, you can come about, out of nowhere. Yeah. Is all right. Point. So why don't you give us a little, okay. So from, why don't you give us a little, a little idea about the path that brought you to the Ducks? Well, no, that's okay. I've, I've really said that yeah. I just did a lot of sculpture before that. I started out having a gallery on Newbury Street, doing small sculptures and so forth. So yeah. and also you did mention that your teacher, which I've never really seen your paintings, maybe like, I think I had one, saw one painting once, but you mentioned your teacher really looked at your painting and loved your painting. Yeah. But so how did you know sculpture was, you know, for someone who's maybe your kid is artistic and creative, but they don't know what avenue to go down. How do you, how did you know sculpture was, sculpt, you know, sculpture was at four? I just always knew sculpture was my thing. I, I had, when I went to the Boston Museum School, I did paintings. And, but I majored in sculpture right away. I, yeah. There was just no choice. I, I can't tell you that was. Yeah, that Donna was, Donna's one of our really good customers. She's in our membership. She says, um, we will have homework from Jackie. Yeah, like Jack, Jackie's a teacher. She's gonna give you some homework now. <laughs> Study the masters. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's a. So anyway, my husband was a professor at MIT mm -hmm. and he was in the Department of Urban Studies and Architecture. And the new architecture dean came with his wife and twin boys. And so um, what you do when you have a new professor coming into the, uh, in, into the school, you entertain them. So we had dinner with them. It turned out that the wife was a uh, urban study person and she was very interested in how children use the city. She used to say that kids are just as happy to walk on a fence as they are to have some fancy, uh, you know, equipment in a, in, or to go through a tunnel um, or a cave or something. Anyway, so we met and we liked each other and she had these, they had these twin boys and they were looking at the park and they went into the park and the boys, it turned out, knew the book, Make Way for Ducklings. So the, when they went into the park, guess what happened? The boys said, mommy, where are those ducks? So they were looking for the ducks since they knew the book. <laughs> at which there's a whole long story about how that happened and how we went to the Art Commission and the Landmarks Commission. And the so let me pause you there. So before we get into that, I have a question. So had you made public art before the Ducks? I had done some very large walls, bronze walls for institutions to raise money. I did some what I called million dollar walls, which I did for uh, nursing homes and various places. Mm -hmm. So that was, but that wasn't public art in the sense that we're talking. This, right. These were fundraising uh, things that so I did. So the woman who was at your house having dinner, was she the first one who made you start thinking about public art? Is it something you had considered? Never thought about it. This was totally new. Mm -hmm. And so this was a very important thing that happened. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, Robert McCloskey said to me after I did the ducks, I and don't, who is Robert McCloskey, for those who Robert don't know? Robert McCloskey was the one who wrote Make Way for Duckling, sorry. Yeah. And, um, but he made me promise that if I did the ducks, I would only do them in Boston, which meant that when people wanted me to do these big ducks, I said, no, 
which meant that I have done sculptures of other things all over the United States. <laughs> and that was a very, very in interesting thing that happened. Keeping promises was a good idea, yes. which is really what Make Way for Ducklings is all about. <laughs> right. Okay. So in my mind, growing up, my whole childhood, which just so you all know, I was pretty snotty as a kid. I remember being at the docks and being like, my grandma made these ducks. So, you know, that was my claim to fame. And I remember being, you know, if you go under the duck, you can like see our initials. And I remember being on my hands and knees showing them as a little kid, which is kind of cool. Um, but in my mind, I just thought you know someone approached you and said make me wait for ducklings you're hired make them and it was that easy which now as an adult and an artist um and a business owner i have learned that was completely not the case totally not the totally case. not the case so i want you guys to understand the hustle and drive that this grandmother my grandmother has because someone all most of her sculptures from what i understand are your ideas you come up with your concepts She's going to pitch her book to you in a minute, which shows you again her hustle and drive. But, you know, you didn't come up with this idea, right? So, I mean, you came up with the idea. Someone did not approach you. I did not come up with the idea. Somebody approached me to come up with the idea. And I, when she said this to me, let's do it, I said, you're crazy. The, the Boston Public Garden, that's sacred ground. And nobody, forget it. But she insisted. And she helped me figure out how to do this complicated thing because we needed a sponsor, then we had to get very important yes. copyright. So, you know, you don't just pull, do sculptures any old place you want. You have to have right. permits and all sorts of things. However, shall I tell you the story? I'll so, tell you story. I think people want to hear it, yeah. so. So I had a very good friend, Caroline Bloy, who had a house in Maine. Mm -hmm. And she happened to know Robert McCloskey very well. So I called her one day and I said, you know, my friend Suzanne DiMaggio and I are thinking about doing the ducks in the Boston Public Garden, but there's no way we can do them if we don't have the copyright. So she said, well, I'll call Bob and see what he says. So whatever she said, <laughs> he said, well, I can't wait to meet these two charming women. I'm coming down from Maine in a couple of days and uh, about, a, I don't know, three or four weeks, and I want to meet them. So uh, therein is a wonderful story of how I met them. And as I picked them up, some magic happened. Because when an artist, when an artist draws or sculpts or paints, they do themselves and don't even realize it unless they're doing something else. So as he and his wife came to me as I was meeting them, as they arrived, it looked like they were coming right out of his book. Wow. <laughs> he looked, it looked like, himself, his drawings of himself and his, of his wife. I mean, it was sort of a very strange and wonderful moment. Anyway. <laughs> That's so cute. Yeah. I actually don't think I realized he was the artist. Too. Yeah. Anyway, he's a fabulous artist. He was yeah. really the best. I couldn't have done the ducks if he hadn't been such a wonderful uh, artist. Mm -hmm. he, he really spectacular. Because I'm taking a two-dimensional drawing and making it three-dimensional. So he has to show me in his two-dimensional drawing what is going on on the other side, all the millions of other sides. Mm -hmm. So, and he did. And one thing that I did was I went to the Boston Public Library, to the print department, and discovered that he had donated some of his drawings, original drawings, to the Boston Public Library. So I spent hours and hours, like the masters <laughs> that I spoke of, copying every one of his drawings so that in a sense I could get inside his head. Because if you copy something, you learn about that person. I did a bunch of Rubens and I can tell you a lot about Rubens if you ever want to know. <laughs> I like can tell a you a sandwich of Ruben? Yeah, right. Yeah. Because <laughs> I did all these drawings of Rubens. Gotcha. Right. So anyway, that's something very interesting. I yes. think how I learned how to copy him <laughs> um are we still frozen someone said we're frozen on here hopefully we're not still we'll keep going we are in her studio right now so if you look behind us um you can see her desk here and she has pictures you must be working on a cat or were you working on a cat yeah you can see all these different photographs of the cats and stuff like that so will someone comment on here and just let us know if we're frozen or oh all set thank you donna perfect you know internet is a little funky so we chose the routers in the house this is her studio so her studio is right by her house um, and we chose this location, so hopefully it's okay. Um, what, but are you frozen? We were for a second. I think, oh. we're, I think we're okay. <laughs> Donna always lets. Love the magic part. How fun. <laughs> so fun. 
That is really cool. I love that part of the story. Yeah. Um, okay. So when, so that something really interesting to know about making the sculpture is how much she studies it. So, and, and I, when I do a painting too, before I, you know, if let's say for the people in our membership, I do the flower of the month. Whenever I do the flower of the month, I look at many different photographs of it many different paintings, how people interpret it. Like, so when I take a painting off of something real, I like to see how other people paint it to interpret it. And then I, and I look at a bunch of different pictures, pink paints, and then I interpret it myself. So for those who are trying to start painting at home, that's something, you know, don't feel like you have to just look at something and know what you're doing right off the bat. I mean, Absolutely. when you think about the best actors in the world, they follow the people, you know, and I, I know like people will, I'm trying to think of who I've heard talk about this, but they'll follow the person they're trying to be for months yeah. and months and months. Yeah. So, right. But um, this is the same thing. This is really repeating this Renaissance yes. concept, which is so great where you learn by, I, I know, I mean, every animal that I've done, even a fox looks different from a, a dog, the mm -hmm. anatomy. And those personalities, every animal, every person, we're all different, we all have something. So the more you study that, whatever you're trying to reproduce, the better your results. So what is it that draws you to animals? Because the majority of your work that you're most well known for, now there's a lot that are not animals that people probably don't know about. That's right. And some of your most like conceptual intellectual work is not animals. That's but, right. <laughs> um, so she's capable of doing not animals, but what is it that draws you to animals? Well, I guess it all happened a long time ago when I went into a park in Israel actually, and there were a whole bunch of um, children in bronze and they were skipping rope and they were playing this and all sorts of games. There was one child that was holding a cat and all the real children who were visiting the park were patting this cat and i thought that's interesting they're not paying any attention to the children the bronze children that are there and then there was a mule and the kids were all trying to get on the mule and they were patting so i thought there's something about this <laughs> and so i realized that if a parent is has a child and there's a man in a business suit who's going to say no. But if it's an animal, they run to the animals and the parents don't say no. So there's something about that magnetism that happens. It's very, very important. And that's, really that's I guess, how it all happened. But then I, you know, I did McCloskey's uh, book. And so that kind of started it. And yeah. as I say, when people wanted the sculpture of the ducks, I did raccoons or <laughs> I did... <laughs> prairie dogs or different or dragons or <laughs> different things yeah and so that's how it happened it was kind of serendipitous i guess so you okay so let's do that so first of all she's two books i'm going to show one book this is make way for nancy first of all all your names are super cute so <laughs> make way for nancy is not what we're showing you guys today necessarily she's been selling this for a long time pre-covid i went around with you a lot at your book signings right. to sell this book so um this is like if you want to know more about her history and the stories behind everything that's in this book. Yeah, this is really very, very interesting. And you could find out that every public art is not easy, but it's it seems like a headache. It's I don't know. My me and my sister who's watching here also is into public art as well. I commend you guys. It's so much work because it's not like you know, I if I make a painting, I come up with a painting, I make it, and then I can choose what to do with it. Choose what to do with it. But you may have an idea and you have to go through loopholes to get there and it's also very manually but i love it difficult. it's challenging and yeah it's what i do and i think it's what yeah. i do best you're very good at well you're also really good at problem solving which is a whole other discussion well, so i would say you're like you're an excellent artist but even even more than being an excellent artist you're an exceptional problem solver and that is what plays into you. and then the two of them together combined you just make yeah. you make magic okay so that's this so um you know what we're really here today to talk about i mean we love talking about everything but this is the coolest and i haven't actually seen this in person i knew this was happening i see and i've been here you know i've seen it online but this is the coolest it's called ducks on parade so our, our camera switched here so we're confused ducks on parade and um you can purchase this through if you go to schon.com her website there's a link to buy it on there it's sold out on amazon amazon cannot get it to, like it's so popular that even amazon can't get it together to sell this right now so um, it's very very cool so why don't you tell us so this book is a compilation of photographs so i'm sure many of you in the boston area if you are from boston let's see a little heart say i'm from boston on here if you're watching this and you're not from boston comment and let us know where you're from we'd also love to know if you're not from boston do you know about make way for ducklings because you know i found if i tell anyone in boston who you are it's like whoa i know who well, she is i have to say the people from oregon washington 
uh, Colorado are all sending, yeah. asking for this book. So they must know. They must know. We were just with her, in ca or her accountant inside was saying they're being ordered from all over the country. So it is really cool how well known they are. Um, but people in Boston, especially, they know about how people dress up the ducks, right? All these ducks are dressed up. Okay. And so let's talk about this book. Well, I have to say that if it had been for somebody by the name of Sue Raymond, I hope you're watching Sue, <laughs> <laughs> who is the new and first uh, director of Brandeis University Press. Yep. And Sue and I, uh, she was responsible for Make Way for Nancy and for my doing it. She was with Godin um, Publishing at some point. And then this wonderful new press started and she was the one who started it at Brandeis University. Anyway, she and I had become friends as a result of the first book. And we were having dinner together and sort of giggling about how the ducks were getting dressed up. And we, oh, we had a little drink maybe, we were feeling <laughs> happy. And we had become friends because of the first book. And we started talking and saying, wouldn't this be fun? And all of a sudden we sort of both said, let's do it. <laughs> but we were both scared to death because this was a big, you know, books are not selling supposedly and books are a problem these days that we didn't know. And it was a big deal. Anyway, Sue is, I don't know how to say wonderful things about Sue, but we worked together and figured it out. And here it is. I can't believe it. I know it's so cool. And it's, you know, it's so nice to see it in person. Like in person, it's just so well made. It's a hardbound book, but it has this beautiful, soft, like satin finished cover. And the paper is so, like it's velvet. Beautiful. It's so gorgeous. Hope is saying every time she visits Boston, she stops to pet the ducks. It's really <laughs> cool. And when I brought my kid there, like I think I brought him last summer or two summers, I don't know. It was so magical to bring my own. What I've seen kids being brought to my whole life to bring my own child was really, really cool. Hi, Tammy. Great to see you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So yeah, okay, Ducks on Parade. So you had this great idea over a few drinks, so fun. <laughs> and then what happened? And then we decided how we what the format was going to be, and we named it. Um, that was Sue's idea. We looked at all sorts of different yeah, names. Yeah, no, it's such a cute I name. I even had my So it's friends. called Ducks on Parade. Ducks, Ducks on Parade. Yep. And um, I even had my grandchildren talk about a name. And we Here is the famous Sue. There you go. <laughs> oh, hi, Sue. Hi, Sue. All right, so you guys had the name, and you thought it was a great name, and you involved your grandchildren to help you even come up with a better name, so and they could not. I wrote a letter to all of my lists of people, and I said, we're doing this book, and we would love to have any any photographs you have, and the best resolution, if you have it, of the duck. So we got at least 200 or so um, entries, people. And then we started culling them and looking at them and doing it and so forth and so on. And eventually we were able, I think there are 67 photographs, but they're not only um, of the ducks when the Bruins won the Stanley Cup, but there's one that I love particularly where it shows, I mean, we have some political, <laughs> political uh, photographs. Oh, that's the first one. The first birthday party, the ducks were, uh, that was what started. Is that first, clear? Yeah. My the, cousin's in here. All of the grandchildren are there. <laughs> so the first birthday party, which was in 1988, they started getting dressed up. But anyway, um, so the Bruins won the Stanley Cup and the Red Sox won the pennant. Oh, anytime there was any sort of an event, people were dressing up the ducks. We didn't know who was doing it. We still don't. And um, they'd sort of appear. But the thing that's so amazing is don't forget as I had to do nine sculptures, not just one, <laughs> each time the, the ducks were dressed up, people did not only Mrs. Mallard, but they did eight babies. And the, the costumes are exquisite. They're just so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's, this book is so beautiful. It's a perfect gift for Mother's Day. It's a perfect gift. Every, <laughs> every time I turn around, I get, a picture from a grandmother. So if you're a grandmother, absolutely, you must give this to, yes. to your grandchildren. Such a good one. I mean, kids are going to love it. Okay, so we had no idea who these were, who was making these, but when you put out the email, someone emailed, she just told me this, so we had a little a little talk before we went live. You told me someone one contacted of, you. One of the guys who, um, who whose photograph is in the book told me that I should, um, he would like to send a book to um, the woman who helped him make the make 
the costumes. But basically, we don't really know who did them. And in the beginning, it was a big, big secret. People are still dressing them up. I'm still getting. Uh, well, I think a lot of people are doing new, it. New photographs. And it may be that we'll do number two. Who knows? Yeah. Except I think we're going to have to do a reorder of this book because it's going so fast. I know. We're just selling out of these. And, and also, so my cousin, shout out to Ben and Laura, who just got married a month ago. They were supposed to have a big wedding because of COVID. They just did it like 13 people in a restaurant and then everyone else was on Zoom. But um, we, I photographed the wedding and we had all the cousins and family members surprise them at the ducks. We were just going for a little photo shoot at the ducks. And um, my aunt, my aunt Susie, who's my nanny's daughter, dressed them all up for the wedding, which is so cute. So I'll have to post a picture of that after here, after on our website so you guys can well, see. I have our to Facebook add page. that a lot of people have gotten engaged at the ducks. Yeah. They've gotten uh, they've done the same thing. They've come after they've been all dressed up in their bridal outfits. They've come to take photographs. This one's making me LOL. Duck or turkey? That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. Yeah. All right. Look, we got Patty saying book looks great. I'll be ordering it. So great. Um, and I have a question. When you order online, can people write notes to you? Oh, or, sure. But people can put a note in about stuff? Yeah. You can. Yeah. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do for anyone who's watching today or any paint bar fan, if you're watching this now or on replay, if you order a um, book in the notes section, write, just write the paint bar. You don't have to write anything fancy. Write the paint bar and then my grandmother will write a special note to you, right? On the, do you wanna do it on a postcard or what would you like to do? No, in the book. In the book, okay, so this is just for our fans. Tell them what you'd like to do. Well, so if it's, if it's to sue, I say to sue, warm regards, Nancy Shirt. Right. How's that? But but you'll but there is a section when you check out. Mia, are you on here? If there's a section when they check out, can they do that? We want to make sure we they can um, before we make too many promises. So she'll get back to us and let us know. Hi, Janice. Hi, Jackie and Nancy. Great to have you on here, Janice. Um, so this is just the coolest. Okay, so so now what? You've done this book and um, like what you know. This book is just so cool. So you might do a part two, which is excellent. They are selling out. So you don't order through the paint bar. You actually go to shown.com. Okay, let me go back and post this. Um, shown, S-C-H-O-N dot C-O-M. Um, this, if you can copy it here. But if you go to shown.com, there is a link right on the front homepage. And then you can see it on there to purchase it through her. For right now, everything's just being purchased through her because that way it's she ships them herself. She writes on them herself. Um, if after today it gets really, really big, and then maybe we'll step in to help her. But right now we're keeping it easy. You go through her. Well, you also can do it through Brandeis University Press. So that's another yeah. way. And there are bookstores that you can order through. Right. But I wouldn't recommend Amazon because they can't do it. They can't There's, ship them in. Yeah. They're all blocked up. Yeah. So. So yeah, S-C-H-O-N dot com. So this is this the link that's on here right now. It takes you exactly to order it. But if you just go to shown.com, S-C-H-O-N dot com, you can find it on the homepage. Very easy. You can order it from there. No. Um, we have some more comments coming in. All right, um, check out, you can add a note. Okay, perfect. Donna's gonna be ordering, excellent, excellent. So yes, there is, people are telling us, thank you every, oh, hi Diane. Thank you for telling us. So um, yes, you can write a note in there um, saying, just write the paint bar. And then you can write, if you, so if you write the paint bar, she'll make sure to say, dear, your name. If it's not just for you though, if it's for somebody else in the notes section, you can say, say who are you? to whoever, whoever you want. Yeah. Just say. Cause this is an excellent Mother's Day gift. So if you want, hey mom, if you're watching, you're getting this for Mother's Day. So uh, for anyone who wants to give this as a Mother's Day gift, honestly, this is the best. I, you know, this book, okay, also the best. This is for biography. And not a biography, this is a story. Yeah. This one is interesting. You should definitely get this one because you'll learn a lot about her. This everyone is going this, to love. Kids are gonna love it too. This book. Oh my god, is, like Charlie's gonna be obsessed with this. This is really a gem, I have to say. And, and Jackie Shown is in again, it. Again, I have to thank. Sue Raymond, who yeah, is the, best. the one who published it and worked with me, and she just made it. She made it as beautiful as. Also, I you think. look the same. Yeah, <laughs> this is her in 1987, and oh, she hasn't there. grown at all. There you go. All right, and that's my cousin Claire. And here we're gonna find Jackie on here, baby. Yeah, Jackie, yeah, yeah. Oop, right, right there. <laughs> and my sister Mia is in there also. And Mia, so let's see more comments coming in. Okay, does anyone have any questions? Um, my mom says she can't wait for her mother's day gift. <laughs> um, any questions on here before we before we leave? So I feel like so we got so, okay. You did the ducks. 
this came many years later. So what's happened since the ducks? Like you are known everywhere as the duck lady. Oh. Cause, and I can understand that because for a long time when we were doing, I was teaching every class at the paint bar and anywhere, I went to a bar one time after class, ran into people, I was referred to as the paint lady. So what is it like <laughs> to be the duck lady? Are you sick of it? Do you okay. love it? Are you ready for well, the next I'm thing? also the dragon lady because mm -hmm. <laughs> I have a dragon in, um, in Dorchester, nine foot park, an eight foot dragon that's really a friendly dragon. Yes. I'm also called the skateboard granny. And this is so cool for people who do not know this. So cool. So I guess I should say that I've always been involved in politics, but in a sort of soft way. But this was very important. And when I did the tortoise and hare in Copley Square, um, right after I did it, and it took seven years to put that in, which is, you should read my book about that story. Not, I can't, it's too long. But um, the kids were doing their ollies, which is the major step that the skateboarders do. <laughs> and I got a call that they were doing it. And I ran down and I got mad and I started yelling at these kids, what are you doing on my sculpture and so forth. So I started talking to them and I discovered something very important since I've been an athlete all myself. These kids are terrific athletes. They don't smoke pot, they don't drink, they don't smoke. They're really athletes and they're doing something. It's very skillful to be a good skateboarder. So I turned this whole thing around because their boards were being taken away from them in Copley Square. They were being fined 50 or 100 bucks. They were, it, it was awful the way they would be to treat, treated like criminals. So we turned this whole thing on, around and uh, they were fixing the upper part of the um, Charles River. So I went up and talked to some people there and started working with them and with the Charles River Conservancy who I eventually went on the board with, with um, Renata von Turner, who was the head of it. And together, we eventually, after, from 1995 until 2016, finally put in a 40,000 square foot skate park, which is a world-class skate park. And I want to tell you, I am proud of that. It's amazing. It was my idea, and um, but I couldn't have done it without Renata and without the board and without all the people who contributed, but it is a world-class skate park. And if you ever go under the Zakem Bridge, you want to see some real athletes go. It is, it's worth, it's fabulous. It's, and I consider that really one of my most important things that I've done. And so I like being the skateboard granny. <laughs> Honestly, if, um, I, I'm sure there's some, I don't know if they're, the duck tours are running. I took a duck tour. Oh, yeah. I thought, I'm from Boston. I don't need to do a duck tour. It's going to be so boring. And we had guests come in and I went on the duck tours and it was like a tour of you. And I had no idea. It was so cool. You passed by the ducks. We talked about the ducks. We talked about the tours skateboard. And tours and hair, which we're going to get, get to in one second. They talk and then you go through under the water into the skateboard park. You're just like, oh my God, this is a tour of my grandmother. This is so cool. Okay. Something else that's really cool that you did, um, did you make these last year already? Because time is flying. Was, wow. No, it was the so, 20. It was 2020. Yeah, no, this was for the Boston Marathon last year, which we know didn't right, happen. I'm wearing, I don't know if you So see these, my... um, the tortoise and the hare are a little, are in Copley Square. And she made these, she partnered with Saucony and they made shoes, right? Oh, I'm not talking oh, Asics. Asics. Asics, sorry, I always wear Saucony fits my wide, wide feet. But Asics, and there was a shoe made out, right? I mean, the shoes. Well, Asics, Tell me the story about these. Yeah, Asics came to me last year ago, September. And they said that every year, the, each um, sneaker company makes a special sneaker for their particular, um, for the runners, because runners who run the marathon often want to keep their sneakers. So this last year, which wasn't run, they asked me to, uh, if they could put a tortoise and hare on each one of the sneakers. And as a result of that, I made very beautiful uh, tortoise and hare um, pins or charms that we could put on their sneakers, or I wear them as pins on my um, my vests here. I know. These are for any <laughs> runners also. I mean, people who aren't running the marathon this year, but maybe are. I mean, this, we didn't intend for this to be like, oh, let's sell her stuff, but it happens to be the perfect time of year, Mother's Day, um, the marathon. And what was the great, marathon time these in are Boston? Great pins. They're, uh, yeah. they're 18 karat gold, and they are an exact reproduction of my tortoise and hare so in Copley Square. It's, done with 3D printing. So they're exactly the same thing. And they're really beautiful. And um, each one is signed. So it's like buying two little sculptures by me. <laughs> little tiny and so ones. can people get those on your website? Oh, also? they're on my website. Yeah. 
www.schon.com. <laughs> and if you ever don't know, if you're like, oh, wait, I saw them live. I don't know where to find stuff. You can always just contact us. We'll tell you how to find all her stuff. Yeah. Well, all you have to do is sort of, I'm, I guess pretty I'm Google. on Wikipedia, pretty too. Pretty Googleable. <laughs> pretty Googleable. I just found out I was on Wikipedia. Are you? Yeah. Wow. Did you like their description of you? Yeah. You think it was accurate? Yeah. yeah. That's cool. A friend, a friend asked for the book, and he said, "You and your husband are the only two people I know who are on Wikipedia." <laughs> Fancy. These are so. Cool. This book. I mean, there's just like I. I knew that I didn't know all of these costumes. You and the political them? ones are really interesting oh, yes. at the end. I mean, I also there's so like in this last year. Yeah, there's too. Black Lives Matter. They got. They have stuff for the um, pandemic from last year. Little quar Easter quarantine. And <laughs> can you find? Can you find Miss? Mrs. Ginsburg. I did find her. I was just getting to her. So here are the little hats. Yeah. Um, pride. They're dressed up with pride. The pink hats. Okay. And these ones, I mean, this is just, RBGB is coming. This one's about solidarity this shows with the, immigrants. The ducks in, when they were in cages down in uh, Texas. Yeah. Wow. So there's some political, it's political. They've been used politically, which is a more recent. Public um, art is very powerful. Yes. We all think about it as one thing, but it is very powerful. Yeah. It has a message, and it's we, really it sends messages. Yes, um, little RGB, so cute. <laughs> it's really amazing. You guys should all get the book. Um, okay, the last thing I was going to ask you: Are any other questions? Feel free to ask questions on here before we. You must be getting tired. We've been on a long time. No, I can talk all day. That's not a. That's not a problem. But <laughs> I don't know if they can listen. Um, all day. Yeah, I don't know if you can listen all day. They're so unique. They're so bad. Okay, so last thing is: so now, where are you with your work? What have you found? Well, I guess one has to say that um, one is one way. Um, you know, you might think of my me as doing very happy kind of fun things. There's a dark side to me. And so I've been doing some political sculptures that I think speak to what's been going on uh, in this world the last few years. And one of the, uh, can, well, we can't show it. Anyway, um, so I've been doing some sculptures that are really about political um, things. One is how bad our administration has been to deal with the COVID um, the virus. And so I did a sculpture around that. However, I've done a piece called Hope, which is sort of based on uh, Obama and his attitude about hope. Um, I've done two, <laughs> two goats that are head to head and I call them. And of course, if, if one of them moves, they fall into the brink. And it turns out I call them Congress. So it's <laughs> Congress not being able to make any decisions. Um, Anyway, um, yeah. I've been doing some, I'm also working on, I think probably one of the more interesting things I've done lately is about Amanda Gorman. And I'm sure most of you have watched the, um, uh, the inauguration. And um, so I'm doing a piece that's based on this skinny little girl. <laughs> can, we, can I bring it over? Well, no, it's not to okay. no, It's not finished. But anyway, uh, that's what I'm doing right this minute. And mm -hmm. I'm sending out books. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and there are a couple of things. So do you feel, do you feel like at this place in your life, especially with everything that's happening in the world, and you've seen a lot happen in your many years, right? Like, do you feel like this is your calling right now? You, you do need I, this to. I love that I'm doing happy, some happy things too. There's a, a four foot snail that's going into the children's hospital in a few months. And where my dragon is, I'm putting in the uh, Owl and the Pussycat, which will be going in in about a month or so. So I'm doing a lot of, a lot of balls are up in the yeah. air. And there's and enjoy doing a big piece that's being built in Taiwan um, of, called Dialogue. Anyway, I'm busy and happy and I love to be happy and I love what I do. And this is fun. This was <laughs> so fun. All right, a few things before. So Ellen Novinsky, um, just ordered the book. Did Nancy sculpt the make way for duckling police officer? Michael. Michael. Yes, you did. Are you selling that? Yeah. Yep. She did do that. You know it, Alan. Hope gives a heart. All right. Andrea says, Jackie, it's such an honor to get to meet your grandmother. She's so talented and you definitely are following. Thanks, Andrea. Um, okay. Her kids grew up in Beacon Hill and ducklings are a huge part of their childhood. Well, this is one of our best, best customers. They hurt. She and her family come do all they the know, time. Do they know? The Myrtle, the turtle on Beacon Hill. Do you know about Myrtle? I mean, that's probably a little bit, I don't know, you guys are in New Hampshire now, I think. Uh, uh, okay. Myrtle, the turtle is a newer one. Um, 
there's some controversy behind that one, yeah, but, right. but okay. definitely have to it's check fair. that out. And okay, another person open and there we go. She ordered a book for her grandson, Nate. Thank you. I'm so glad you liked it. Fantastic, man. And then Mia again is posting how you can find all everything. So she has this online shop and gallery, which just to end, like, you know, having an online gallery is very different than when you started your artwork, right? I, I never had one, thanks to Mia. I have one. So now. Mia is my sister, another grandchild. There are 11 of us. And now there are like, how many great grandchildren are there now? I can't Almost check. six. Almost five. five. five and a, and this year they doubled. We, we have, we had, I had one, my cousin just had one, and then we have another cousin having one in a month. So right. we're just <laughs> making babes. Um, yes, you know about Myrtle the Turtle. Is she on Myrtle Street? Yes, Myrtle the Turtle is, oh, you didn't know. Myrtle the Turtle is on Myrtle Street. A little controversial, Myrtle the Turtle was in the actual park playground, but then some parents uh, thought it got too hot in the sun, and Myrtle has now been moved. I would love to have parents move it, get rid of that fence around it. You know, it's not I, fair. Right. So now it's fenced off. I have brought my child. You know, if it's hot, don't go on some on a bronze sculpture. But anyway. we can talk about that. <laughs> uh, so that's about it. All right. So we will sign off unless anyone has any questions. But thank you all for joining us. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for listening yes. to all of this stuff. Thank you. And if you guys have more questions, I mean, she's she's always game to talk to you so we can bring you on again. But just before heading out, my sister has the website on there. Go to shown.com, S-C-H-O-N.com. Um, and you can purchase her books. You can, Or you can just look at everything she does. You don't need to purchase anything. But the book is... I mean, really genuinely, I love this. I, I want to buy this for all my friends. I love it. And your pins are fantastic. It's just really cool. You know, I grew up having a role model who was a woman and an artist. So growing up, it didn't, the idea of becoming an artist was just like, well, yeah, obviously. But to the rest of the world, that's such a weird thing. Like, like who, you know, the starving artist was not ever something that I conceptualized because I didn't know, you know, the artist that I knew was like the one of the most but, successful artists in Boston. But speaking of talent, this is one of the more talented people. And Thank Mia, you. who you're not seeing, these two are really fabulous. Yeah. I mean, well, our whole family person, is, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. you have 11 grandchildren and all of us do art and maybe not all of us are doing it professionally, but every one of us and all your children do art in some way, which I credit our, you know, starting with you and our parents for encouraging all of us and giving us the confidence to be creative. Doesn't mean we have to be artists, but we are all creative it's thinkers. It's true, it's very true. So we're very lucky. <laughs> we're really, really lucky. All right, we're gonna sign off, but thank you so much. It was great to have you all here. We'd love to see your comments, keep them coming in. Um, enjoy this gorgeous day in Boston. It's beautiful weather, which we appreciate. And I also appreciate having my baby and child here right now. <laughs> we haven't had time alone in a very long time and to be in masses yeah, is lucky. All right, we're gonna end. Thank you everybody. Thank Have you. a great rest of your day and we'll talk to you all soon. Bye. Bye.